Yeah, hello, Bobby here at Next Gen Electronics Labs and Next Gen Hot Spots. I hope everybody's doing great. Yeah, I just want to show you kind of an oddball thing that uh, happens every once in a while. It's like super ultra rare. First time I ever had this instance happen, but hey, it's a first time for everything. Uh, as most people know, I've built a, well, almost 5,700 hot spots. And once in a while, and maybe one out of every three or four thousand, that's been my batting average. Um, you know, sometimes the oscillators on the boards uh, are a little bit wacky. And this is one of those. I took this board back. I, I typically can troubleshoot on the phone, but um, the gentleman that had the board actually did a pretty good job of troubleshooting between, I guess, his, his knowledge of technical things and uh, reading the website. So here's I'm going to show you something. KM6 IKH Echo Test Echo Text. Echo test. One, two, three. Echo test. One, two, three, four. Now this is the board that came back. There's nothing I can't tune, so I tuned it. Okay, I'm six. IKH. Echo test. Echo test. Echo test. One, two, three. Echo test. One, two, three, four. And there we go, 0 0.03. You know, anything point, point zero 0.01, point zero 0.03 on average is wildly acceptable uh, by any standard, period, bar none. Um, you, can, you can chase the, the, uh, the Burr 8 Zero down to, it drives you absolutely out of your mind. You pulled every hair out of your head. It's really, it's, a, it's an exercise in a fruitless endeavor completely. Uh, anything 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4% uh, is, is good. It's very, very good. It's extraordinarily acceptable. You're not going to have any perceivable problems ever. Matter of fact, you can, you can be up to 1, 2, 3% um, off on your burr rate and still not even have any perceivable loss of audio. It's pretty forgiving. But now in this particular one, the reason I'm showing you is this. Let me, let me show you what I had to do. This started off at a 475 offset. And I'm probably going to have to zoom out here a little bit, so bear with me. Okay, zoomed in. Doesn't want to zoom out. Alrighty, well, I'll deal with it. Not a big deal. Work around. So anyways, uh, I'll go over here to uh, Expert, and we'll take a Jala little trip over here to MMDVM Host. I'm going to show you how I tuned this. I tuned it in about, it took me five minutes, a little longer than normally ever takes me to tune. I don't usually I can tune about two minutes. Uh, right here is where I had to go with it, though. Okay. Right here. Negative 1,000 offset. That's called wonky oscillator. Very wonky. Uh, I've, I, first time I've seen one this far wonky, as a matter of fact. But even though we use you know good quality oscillators, proof is in the pudding. Oscillators do go out. I don't care what MMDVM board you have. Um, it's not 100% uh, uh, zero error rate in the process of uh, manufacture of an oscillator. Uh, that's like high pie in the sky. Um, generally never going to happen. It's never 100%. <clears throat> Usually you get really good oscillators. You're down to about 99% 99, 99 success rate. And that's as good as it's going to get. Anybody that tells you any different just doesn't know what they're talking about. Uh, it's just part of the world of elect microelectronics down at the microscopic level. And uh, what happened here, well, I couldn't tell you at the microscopic le level. I don't need to. What I can tell you, looking here at negative 1,000, uh, that oscillator got real wonky. <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, I'll keep, I'm going to keep this for one of my machines. I'll use it. Uh, I'm not concerned with that. I can, I can tune anything. So I'm going to go back over here. Let's go back to the dashboard. Now, this can change sometimes when they get wonky like this, when they get really wonky wonky. Okay, go back here. Indeed, sometimes they can start drifting even uh, more, and they can drift in either direction. So let me just give it another try. I've had this thing plugged in for probably 15 minutes now. Let's see what happens. KM6IKH doing an echo test. Echo test, echo test. Echo test, one, two, three. Echo test, one, two, three. 
Let's see if it stabilized at about 0.3. Yeah, 0.2. Got a little better. Okay. I'm not complaining about that. Hey, I'm 6 ikh doing an echo test. Echo test. Echo test. Echo test. One, two, three. And one, here's the hat running on our uh, on our test bed. Does that show you? Okay. Now it's it's fine. Wonky wonky. But so uh, this hat, I will keep for one of my personal units because. Uh, I would never trust it for a custom machine again, but for my machine, it's fine. You know, I can always replace it if I need to. But most likely, uh, this uh, this particular oscillator that really went off into the North 40 probably went to about a maximum drift and will be stabilized. That's kind of typically how it works, um, as a general rule. Anyways, so I'll try it one more time. You know, again, this has been plugged in for what 15, 16, maybe 18 minutes now. Uh, everything should be warmed up enough. There shouldn't be any uh, any heat drift. KM six I K H testing one, testing two, and testing three. Getting a nice steady light, steady light on the send. Now you see it, it went a little wonky. Went to point seven. That could happen. KM six I K H there testing go. one. This is still acceptable, although on our custom machines, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.4 max is what we what we shoot for. Okay, that's not bad. It's okay. For a machine I'm going to use, I'm good with it. Uh, I'm not worried about that as well, at, at all. But uh, something like this, absolutely will never go in a customer machine. Let me try it one more time. We'll just see what happens. KM6, I, K, H, testing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Typically I'll count up and down from ten a couple times to make sure it's stable. Yeah. Okay. This particular oscillator has pretty much stabilized. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's coming right back. I had the volume turned down. So, as you can see, things can get wonky. This is a, a typical, I know exactly what it is, and we're not we can replace the oscillators. We have all the facilities to do that here and, and the equipment, I guess I should say. Of course we have facilities. But we have the equipment and we have the expertise to swap an oscillator out. But we just don't do it. <clears throat> uh, it's just more work than it's worth and we just don't bother with doing it here. Plus all our, all our machines are made over in China. Uh, we can go to uh, Mauser and we can go order a handful of oscillators. But uh, we just don't do that. It's not worth the time and effort here. I'd rather just swap the board, give someone another board. So uh, this board will be for me, and uh, I'll use it on my machines, and I'm, I'm sure the oscillator has pretty much wonky to its max, uh, negative 1,000. Uh, never seen one off that far. Usually it's uh, maybe 100 or 200 in either direction, uh, but not, not that much. That's 47, so it's 600. Uh, that's a little bit more, as a matter of fact. Now, 6 is 500 and 525 off. Uh, 525 drift is a lot. But nonetheless, as you can see, proof in the pudding, I can tune it again. I can retune the oscillator. Uh, not a problem uh, to do that in Pi-Star. There's really nothing I've ever found I couldn't tune unless the oscillator was just absolutely dead. Then that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a dead end right there. You can't, uh, the hat's not going to work with a dead oscillator. So this one did a pretty wonky drift, but uh, we got it back under control at 0.02. Uh, absolutely flying colors uh, acceptable on our bench at any any given day or time. And uh, so Bobby, KM6IKH, just uh, showing you what happens when an oscillator goes wonky. And uh, again, it happens extraordinarily rare. I don't think I've seen more than <sighs> less than a dozen that have really been off. I mean, and none, none this far. I mean, a lot that have been off a little, we tuned them here. But I've never seen one off this far. You know, 525 off of the uh, uh, the stated uh, the stated offset. It's pretty far off. But nonetheless, as you see, I got it back under control again. We found the sweet spot, and I don't do it with any machinery or any code or anything like that. I just I do it by just dead reckoning. I just know these hats so well. I know what direction to travel and how fast to go to be able to isolate an, uh, an oscillator issue really fast. This one took me about five minutes. It's kind of a long time. Usually I can do it in a minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, and that's if I have to chase one a little. Again, it's extraordinarily rare I ever, ever have to do that. But 
when I've when the dozen or so times that I've had to do it, I've always been able to isolate it pretty quick. Uh, this one was the wonkiest of them all. Anyways, um, but just to show that they can be brought back under control again. And this one has probably drifted as far out as it is going to go, but it is going to go into one of my machines. Uh, absolutely, just the fact it came back from a customer, it can't go into a next-gen machine anyway. So I'll keep this and I'll throw it in one of my builds and uh, throw it up in the dash of the car and you know, I'll get years and years of life out of it. So, Bobby KM6 IKH, have a fantastic day and uh, catch you down the log, 73, and uh, we'll see you soon.